Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a great start to your week. I hope that you are ready to get to your sewing machines because I have a really fun project for you today. We're continuing the pie theme that I kind of started last week um, with our So What tutorial, and it was very popular. So I decided to create another pie themed project, and it's actually a take on a project that we did over the summer. So um, I've kind of transformed it a little bit, and I'll show you all about that momentarily. Um, first things first, though, how many of you out there uh, purchased our So Good Sewing Supply Roll-Up Kit? This kit at Sulky.com comes with a full video tutorial, and after you purchase the kit, you get um, a link for the video tutorial, and that's also where you grab up the pattern for this. So I just wanted to make sure if you did grab up this kit that you went ahead and followed the link to get the video and the pattern because I happen to see um, that we sold a great number of these kits and only a few people have access to the video as of now. So I just wanted to make sure that you didn't overlook the link for your video tutorial and your pattern because how are you going to make it if you don't have the pattern, first of all? Um, and, you know, hopefully the video is very helpful for you. It's basically the entire project start to finish. So you can start it, pause it, rewind it, fast forward, all of that. And it lives in your personal library, just like if you were to have one of our live events in your personal library. You can always access those after the event ends and watch it at any time. So if you did purchase this, make sure that you follow through with that link, get your pattern, get your video, get everything you know that comes with it. And if you didn't uh, purchase this, we still have um, a limited few available at sulky.com. So you can still grab up the kit for this, get your video tutorial, get your pattern, all of that. It's called the So Good Sewing Supply Roll-Up. And actually, you don't have to use it for sewing supplies. You can use it for art supplies. I have one that I made that I use for makeup brushes and I roll it up and I put it with my toiletry bag when I'm traveling. Um, and actually I use it every day. I don't just use it for traveling because it's such a great little organizer. So you unroll it and it has a flap with a magnetic snap closure. So it's nice and secure. And then the upper edge of your little pocket is trimmed with fold over elastic. So it gives you a little bit of room and ease for you to put your supplies in. So again, I love this for makeup brushes. If you happen to need a gift for uh, your, um, you know, gal at the salon or guy at the salon or um, a sewing friend or even kids really enjoy these because they can put all their school supplies in here, markers, pens, what have you. If you're heading out to a restaurant or if you're going to go on a road trip over the holidays, this is really great to corral a bunch of their things. So it makes a really good gift as well. And plus the kit that we have contains this really great purple fabric. Who doesn't love purple? Just saying, one of my favorites. <laughs> so anyways, after you roll it up, you just tie the little ties you can tie it in a bow or a loose knot, and everything is nice and tidy and put together. And to match the hardware on the magnetic snap, we've got some little cord ends. These actually are meant for the ends of zippers. When you want to add a handbag zipper and you don't finish the zipper ends, you kind of tuck them into the handbag. These are designed for that but I added them to the ends of our ties and it just gives it a little bit of a designer touch and you know ties in that antique hardware that we used for the magnetic snap. So at any rate, I wanted to be sure if you grabbed up this kit that you followed the link, got your video, got your pattern, 
and that you're on your way, if not already done, with your sewing supply roll-up. And again, we still have some kits available. So if you're interested in that, they're very inexpensive um, as far as kits go. You get all the fabric, the fold-over elastic, the thread, the hardware, everything that you need, um, including the batting, which is inside, to give it a little body and structure. All right, so a number of you are saying hello. Definitely tell me where you're watching from and put your questions and comments in the live chat. Uh, so that we can address those as we move forward today. Oh, Karen says, I purchased three. All right, well, that would explain uh, why, you know, perhaps there's one kit sold and or three kits sold, but only one person in uh, with the video access. So I guess that didn't occur to me. Um, if people are buying multiples, then that would make more sense. All right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Sharon says, I have the kit. Thanks for the pattern reminder. All right, good. Just wanted to be sure. Um, all right. Because, you know, as time goes on and we do more kits and more events, just want to make sure that you have that one in your personal library so that when you are ready to make it, it's there for you. It's not going to go away. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, you didn't overlook anything when you purchased up that kit. Speaking of events, we have a number of events coming up. I want to make sure that you're all registered for them. But before I give you the little, uh, you know, blurb about those kits, uh, let's see. I want to make sure you also are aware of our sale right now. Um, I'm going to be talking about quite a few stabilizers as we talk today. Um, and if you buy them by the roll or even on the bolt, you get 30 percent off. This is a crazy sale and it's definitely time to stock up on the stabilizers that you're going to use for holiday gift giving, holiday decor, you know, anything you're going to be making for gifts coming up for the holiday season. Um, so if you plan on, let's say, making a bunch of applique projects, grab up a bolt of perfect applique because you can get it for just over a hundred bucks. You're saving like a ton of money. So it's definitely time to stock up, take inventory on what you have so that you can take advantage of this 35% off. Uh, because honestly, I've never seen it better than that. 35% off is a big deal. All right. So speaking of our events, our mystery quilt along is in full swing. And actually... This Friday, the mystery quilt will be revealed in its entirety. You'll be able to see how all the blocks come together, what the finished quilt looks like. Finally, we've been working on it all month in October, and this Friday is the day that you're going to get the full quilt pattern, not just all the blocks, and you'll be able to see how to arrange all the blocks you've been making. Uh, we do have a Mystery Quilt Along community that is associated with this event, and it's just buzzing with activity. Everybody is really taking advantage of it and posting their questions and pictures, and I've seen a number of pictures posted on there uh, where people are actually making two quilts. Uh, one person is making it in two different colorways, uh, so as the weeks progress, she's finishing her blocks for the mystery quilt using her kit. And she's also finishing another one. And it started out that she was using that colorway, I believe, as a practice uh, and then cutting into her kit and creating the blocks that way. And then her practice ones ended up being just as good as the finished pro product. So now she's making two in tandem and she can gift one away when the quilt along is done and I mean, how impressive is this? Love it. So if you aren't a part of the Mystery Quilt Along, you can still register and participate. It's just that on Friday, it will no longer be a mystery, but you will still get all the tutorials to create a beautiful quilt. And it is really stepped out uh, in manageable chunks so that you can just focus on one block at a time and then complete your finished quilt top. So it's a really, really fun, neat event at sewingonline.sulky.com. We still have mystery quilt kits available, but they are in very limited supply. 
These feature all the fabrics that you see in the mystery quilt. So there's no guessing game about what color to use, where, where does the focal print go, etc. You'll have everything that you need right in front of you to create the whole quilt top, plus three spools of sulky threads. Um, and we show you how to use these three different threads in your finished quilt, and you can kind of mix and match and choose the threads that you want to feature where. So you're also going to get tips for quilting the finished piece this coming Friday as well. And in the quilt along, Ashley Huff, who is our instructor for the quilt along, she has broken down some different projects you can make using the individual block patterns. So if the full quilt is still intimidating for you, um, or you want to make some smaller projects to gift away, there's also bonus tutorials within the quilt along for making pillows, table toppers, all kinds of things using those block patterns. So you get a lot of bang for your buck with this pattern and with the video tutorials. All right, Colleen says, I'm, fa I'm falling way behind with my mystery quilt. Life keeps getting in the way. I hear you. There's just so many projects and so little time. <laughs> but hopefully you've gotten a start on it and you can always refer back to those videos when you're ready to pick it back up again. And you know, it's okay that we fall behind, right? We're in this together, so don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. I also want to make sure that everybody who wants to attend our Machine Embroidery Basics and Beyond webcast, which is happening tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Time at sewingonline.sulky.com, be sure if you want to attend live tomorrow that you've registered. If you're unavailable tomorrow, but you still want the information, be sure to register as well, because as I mentioned before, all of our events go to an on-demand format once the live event ends. So you'll be able to watch it in its entirety or pick out chunks that you want to review. And just by registering, you will get more than $50 in embroidery designs from andthegrand.com. So we will be using those designs throughout the webcast to illustrate different fabric stabilizer and thread combinations for our machine embroidery recipes that we're going to be following. So those designs are kind of our examples, but you will get them all for free just by registering for the webcast. So you'll have a great little collection of designs uh, that you can practice with as well, create some test stitch outs, or use them for some holiday gifting. All right, so make sure that you've registered for that. And yes, if you attended this earlier in the year, we did present this webcast back in February. And if you attended that one, it's going to be a lot of the same information. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure you might want to review the information or ask some new questions during our live Q&As. And also by registering for this one, you will be eligible for the door prizes. So if you didn't win the door prizes the first time around, now is your second chance to get back in the pool and hopefully your name is called tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right, I promise I'm gonna get to the tutorial here today, but here is the kit for tomorrow's webcast and it's at a great, great deal. As you know, once we get to our webcast day, you only have a limited time to take advantage of the kit special and the web special pricing. So this kit is only $39.99. You get three packs of needles. You get six sulky rayon threads and one sulky bobbin thread. You get a printed uh, placement sticker sheet for all of your machine embroidery needs. And you also get a stabilizer sampler pack. If you were to purchase all of these together, I think it's over $50 at least. So for $39.99, what a great deal. And you'll be using these items throughout all of your holiday gifting um, or gift making rather um, and beyond. And all of the threads that you see there are the threads that are featured in the design collection that you will get when you register. So once you grab up the kit, you'll have all those threads right at hand, which would probably cost you 
$39.99 just in threads alone. So um, Noreen says, do the needles in that pack work with Janome machines? Yes, they should work with Janome machines just fine. They're organ needles and you'll get a Microtex pack, a top stitch pack, and an embroidery pack. These are pretty much my top go-to needle types for machine embroidery. That's right, I don't always use an embroidery needle when I'm doing machine embroidery because it's really gonna depend on that recipe we're putting together based on our fabric, our technique, our thread that we're using, all of those good things. So you'll learn more about that tomorrow. Be sure to grab up a kit while it's on sale because it's gonna go fast and it's a great, great deal. Okay. Let's see, another exciting event. I know, I'm sorry to take up so much time with these events, but as the holidays draw near, we just have so much going on and I wanna make sure that you're aware of all of it so you can sign up for the things that interest you the most. Now, we just started talking about this recently, but I have been working on this project for probably six months now. <laughs> as you know, when we do one of these events, we really spend a lot of time making sure that it is a fantastic event that you are all going to love so much. So we put a lot of our hard work, our heart and soul, our blood, sweat and tears <laughs> into these projects. And I am just so in love with this one. And I think you will be too. So our event happening in November, it's going to be November 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. It's a Tuesday and it's called Christmas Gift Tags. We are going to be making these beautiful Christmas gift tags in the hoop of our embroidery machine. All right. So these are designed by our very own talented Valerie Tynes here at Sulky. And, uh, we've turned them into really, they're, they're just stunning. They're stunning. So they're made in a metallic flecked cork fabric. So they really are some high end pieces. Um, we've got a large size, which for context, here's how big it is next to my head. Um, and we've got a small size small and large. Here's the difference. One fits in a five by seven hoop. The other fits in a four by four hoop, I believe. All right. So not only are they beautiful and have beautiful thread work, you can see we've got rayon thread, but we also have thrown in a poly sparkle thread spool as well to this palette. So there's little flecks of gold in the thread, as well as little flecks of gold in the cork fabric. Now on the back of the tag is a little pocket. See our little pocket? It's the perfect size for fitting a gift card. So the large size will fit the gift card. I'm trying to find my little gift card that I had. And you can just slide it in through the back little pocket. See how easy that is? or you can put a little cash or a note. And then we've got our little metallic elastic cord that fits perfectly in the little slot. And they're just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. So there are six large designs and of course, six of the small designs. For the small design, you can see the pocket is much, much smaller, so you can't fit a gift card in that small one, but you can fit a little, uh, you know, tag of sorts or note or a little, you know, rolled up $20 bill, something like that. Or you can omit the pocket and just create your beautiful gift tag and put it on a nicely wrapped gift for the holidays. So lots of things we are going to be learning throughout this webcast, how to work with cork fabric how to embroider it so that you get beautiful results. Notice there's no, uh, what am I trying to say? There's no buckling, puckering, nothing. It's just, they're just gorgeous. 
All right, so this is a free webcast, November 7, 2 p.m. Eastern time. You'll learn how to make these. And then I'm also going to show you a cross stitch blank gift tag that you can create with the same designs. So you can use this cute little wooden cross stitch blank. And actually, <laughs> I was at like a big box store the other day and I went to the crafting aisle because I always like to see what they have on hand. They had little cross stitch blanks, little stars, little apples, little circles. And I thought, I've never even seen these before. I can't believe they're at big box stores, but they don't come with patterns. They don't come with designs. It's just the blank, right? With the holes in it. And the holes represent the count of the blank. So if you're familiar with cross stitching and Ada cloth, right? You would buy your Ada cloth based on the count of your pattern or your chart, okay? So for example, a 14 count Ada cloth has 14 holes per square inch on the fabric. So that's how you can do counted cross stitch and know what your count is, okay? So the same rules apply to these blanks. They're actually wooden, uh, die cut wooden blanks, okay, with holes in them, and they also have a specific count to them, like the Ada cloth. But they're super stable because you're working with this piece of wood, and so you don't need to hoop anything, and you just start sewing within the little punched out circles. So at any rate, we have a version of this entire collection created for these cross stitch wooden blanks. So I'll show you how all of that works as well. And I even have a bonus tutorial within the webinar where you will see a brand new project as well. There's just, there's gonna be so many things that you will learn during that free webcast. And yes, we do have a kit available for that as well. And for the Christmas gift tags kit, you will get everything for the machine embroidery versions. If you do wanna make the cross stitch versions, those will be available separately, but not inside of the main kit, all right? So in this kit, you will get your metallic flecked uh, cork fabric and you get a half yard. So you'll get quite a bit so that you can create at least six of the large sizes of gift tags. And depending on if you omit your pocket or whatnot, you can really take advantage of that yardage. You will also get some stiffy stabilizer and you get 10 spools of sulky thread as well as your elastic uh, cording, the gold elastic cording and a pack of needles. Sorry, I just dropped something and I have no idea what it was but I think it was a gift tag and I don't wanna roll over it because they're so precious and cute. Okay, so this kit is already on sale at our special, special webcast price. So make sure that you grab one up so that you can get it. Have it on hand if you would like to have it on hand during the webcast, although it's not a traditional sew along, uh, but sometimes it is nice to have the materials in front of you while you are watching me uh, you know, show you how it all works. All right. And someone said, it, oh no, it's election day on the 7th and they're working the polls, but they want to see the webcast. Well, just like all of our events, after we're live, it will go to on demand format, which means it's now a recorded video and you can watch it from start to finish or what have you, pick and choose the moments that you want to review. Anytime after the live event, you can just go to your event page as long as you've registered for it. It'll be in your personal library and you can watch it at any time. So be sure to register. You'll also get a free machine embroidery design from Sulky just by registering for that event as well. All right, so many things to talk about. We also, I know it's another event. So while you're at sewingonline.sulky.com, right, registering for everything, just keep adding stuff to your library and you'll be all set and we will send you reminder emails when we're going live so you don't even have to worry about it. Okay, so New Year's Eve, I know, can you believe it? 
We haven't even had Halloween yet, and I'm talking about New Year's Eve, but this is another great one. If you want to grab up your kit, you need to be thinking about that now because these kits go really fast. We always partner with Sally Tomato for a New Year's Eve sew along event. We spend four hours together on New Year's Eve starting at noon Eastern time. So if you're planning, if you're planning on going out that night or whatnot, this gives you something to do during the day and you can make a brand new bag with some in the hoop embroidery charms and you can even wear it out that evening to your New Year's Eve festivities. Um, or if you're like me and you plan on cuddling up on the couch <laughs> instead of going out, you could still have a brand new bag to show for it and even create some extra charms, um, you know, to pass the hours until you toast to the new year. So definitely register for this event. Uh, with your registration fee, you will get this brand new Veronica bag pattern by Sally Tomato. It's a $9.99 value. And you will get nine embroidery design files from Parker on the Porch. It's three designs, three different ways. So you can make either a charm, a snap tab, or use the flat design to embellish your Veronica bag. So during the sew along, you're going to watch myself and Jessica Barrera of Sally Tomato. We are going to take you through these projects from start to finish. We're going to take some breaks for Q&A and take some breaks so people can get caught up. And it's just such a fun, fun time. This is going to be our fourth year doing our New Year's Eve sew along. And I know a number of you have joined us all four years. And it's just such a fun, fun time. Our theme is totally 80s. I don't know if you got that from this image here. But it's going to be great. And you will learn all about Veronica. Veronica. Yep, that's one of the... Uh, <laughs> That song was one of the inspirations behind this bag. So if you're familiar with Sally Tomato, she names all of her patterns after classic songs, classic movie characters, things like that. So I love that about Sally Tomato. All right, make sure you sign up for that one while you're at sewingonline.sulky.com as well. So uh, in order, we've got Machine Embroidery, Basics and Beyond happening tomorrow. In the Hoop Christmas gift tags happening November 7 and New Year's Eve so along. So make sure you've signed up for everything. Make sure you're getting all of your kits so that you can get them in time um, and get them while they're on sale. There is a uh, coupon code at Sally Tomato for the kit. So when you are getting your New Year's Eve kit, read the description of the kit because the coupon code is inside the description. So make sure that you copy and paste that into your order and you can get 15% off of that kit um, if you purchase it as an early bird. All right, I think I've covered all the business we needed to take care of so we can get to our adorable pie placemat project. Uh, here we go. So I created this pumpkin pie placemat. And I was also inspired to create an apple pie version of the placemat. And I thought also you could easily do, let's say, a cherry pie with a lattice crust. So we'll talk about all of that because we're going to create our crust using applique methods. Very simple to do. This project did not take long at all. Um, in fact, it was so quick and easy, I decided to make my own binding. I know, I know. Sometimes, though, making your own binding is even quicker and easier than using the pre-made stuff, which, as you know, just does not have the same feel to it and ends up not really matching your project as much as you would like it to. So while that seems like a time saver, uh, a lot of the times I would have to go to the store to get the pre-made binding anyway because I just don't have stockpiles of it. So it's much quicker and easier for me to make my own um, at the end of the day. But I digress. Let's dive in to the pie placemats and I hope you will be inspired to make them for your Thanksgiving table or even just your fall table. They're super cute. Okay, 
So first and foremost, I mentioned that we are having a sale on stabilizers right now. Rolls and bolts are 35% off. This also applies to Perfect Applique Fusible Web. Even though it's not a stabilizer, we have rolls and bolts of it. So we've included it in the sale. So you can get a roll of Perfect Applique or a bolt of Perfect Applique for 35% off today. Now, the rolls, you know, if you buy, let's say, a one yard pack, it's going to run you around eight bucks, I want to say, eight or nine dollars. If you go up to the roll while it's on sale, it's about 16 bucks. You're getting way more product on the roll. Okay. If you go up to the bolt, you're getting 25 yards. And on sale, it's around 100 bucks. Okay. So uh, I know I'm not getting, you know, the exact, exact numbers, but off the top of my head, you're going to be saving quite a bit. So if you plan on creating a bunch of these placemats, let's say, doing some more applique projects as you roll into the holiday season, grab up that bolt. It is so handy to just have it in your sewing room. Um, you know, I am sewing so much. I'm looking at my stack of bolts that I have right here. Um, but when these sales happen, that's the time to grab up a bolt. Just saying. All right. So here is the roll you can purchase. Here is the bolt you can purchase. Or you can just grab up a one yard pack and you'll be able to create um, probably about mm, four placemats with a one yard pack. Um, now, it really depends on the size of your placemat. This is all one continuous applique piece. So it does take up a chunk of the perfect applique. But of course, we're going to save that centerpiece of perfect applique for another use, which might just very well be the apple pie version of the placemat. See how this is the center? Okay. All right. I'm getting ahead of myself. Along with perfect applique and, of course, the fabrics that you choose for your pie, you will need some beautiful thread. I used Sulky 50 weight cotton thread to construct my pie placemats as well as to quilt them. If you want your quilting to be a little bit more pronounced, you can go up to a 30 weight thread, um, a 30 weight cotton thread, or even a 30 weight blendables thread if you want to throw in a little bit of color in there um, or different colors, I should say. But I wanted my quilting to blend in. You see how it's you can really just see my fabric print and the indentations of all of my pie pieces. So by using the 50 weight thread, our thread blends in with our fabric. Whereas if you went up to a 30 weight thread, then your thread's going to be more pronounced and it's going to just pop off of the surface a little bit better. All right. So. Grab up a thread spool that's going to match. Let's just talk pumpkin pie for the moment. You want a thread spool that matches your pumpkin filling, and you want a thread spool that matches your crust piece. And I'm just so thrilled with the fabrics I was able to find at my local Joanne Fabric Store because the crust fabric is like this cream color with little metallic dots in it just like our golden brown crust. I just couldn't believe it when I found it. And then, of course, our pumpkin color filling um, is so cute. And this came in like four different colorways. There was a chocolate brown, this pumpkin color, and then a little bit darker, almost like maple orange color, which I thought worked for the apple pie so, so well. All right, so if you're lucky enough to find a blender that comes in a few different colors, you don't have to create four pumpkin pie placemats. You can do a different pie for each table setting and it, they still coordinate and go together. All right, let's see here. So we need to create our applique template slash pattern for our placemat. So You'll, you might 
think that this image is um, a little familiar. Over the summer, I did a round placemat that looked like a citrus slice. So I created the applique pattern to be sort of the pith of our citrus slice. So it has the outline and then it has all the little segmented uh, citrus pieces cut out of it. So I created this pattern and that's what I used for the applique piece. I fused this applique over the top of our citrus fabric and that became the top of the placemat. So what I decided to do was start with this pattern that I had already created, but just trace the outer circle edge right on to the paper side of my fusible web. Now you certainly can create your pattern using new paper and then transfer it to your fusible web, but I just rolled with it and started creating my pattern directly onto the paper side of the fusible web. So I simply uh, drew along the outline of my citrus slice placemat pattern. And then I just freehanded a little bit of a fluted edge, right, for my pie. And I started off with um, sort of a smaller fluted edge. And I decided that it looked a little too, I don't know, wavy, right? So then I went over the top and you could see I made it much larger. And I really liked the look of that much better. So I went around and just sort of perfected my fluted edge of the pie. And really freehanding this is the way to go because if you think about making a pie, when you're fluting the edge, you're just doing it freehand, right? We're not measuring every, well, most of us <laughs> aren't measuring every inch to make sure our fluted edge is absolutely symmetrical. So we want our placemat to have that sort of organic look as well. So freehand your wavy edge, but you know, start with a good circle so you're not veering off course too much. Once you have that edge, we also want to mimic that edge about an inch or inch and a half from our outer edge. And this is gonna be our fluted pie crust edge, and that's gonna be our applique. All right, so once you've cut out your applique crust edge, you're gonna have a wavy strip in a circle, all right? Then we need to fuse it to our crust fabric. Um, after fusing our fusible web to the crust fabric, you can go ahead and cut out that piece and set it aside. Now we're gonna make our quilt sandwich for the placemat itself. So we have our crust fabric, which is going to be the backing. You'll have that wrong side up on your flat work surface. Use a little bit of Sulky KK2000 temporary spray adhesive, spray all over the fabric. Then you're gonna put your piece of batting over the top of your backing, smooth out the edges, make sure it's nice and flat. Then you'll spray the back of your pie filling fabric. So our pumpkin fabric gets sprayed and placed over the top of our batting. Now we have a quilt sandwich or a placemat sandwich. Now if you like, you can use some Insulbright batting in between your fabric layers and then you can use this as a trivet or like a hot pad. So for my apple pie version, notice how much smaller it is because I repurposed the inner circle of my crust fabric to create a little apple pie version. So for this one, I made it more of a trivet size or a hot pad size. So I put Insulbright batting in between my fabric layers, which it's an insulated batting that has, oh, what does it have in it? insulation <laughs> that's going to make sure that anything hot you put on it doesn't transfer to the table beneath, 
okay? It insulates. <laughs> Somebody help me. <laughs> help me describe this stuff. Um, it's really great. I'm sure if you've made pot holders, you always put an insulated batting between the layers of pot holders so that your hands don't get burned when you are grabbing stuff out of the oven. So it's the same stuff you would use for those pot holders. You're just going to use it if you want to make a trivet or a hot pad instead of a placemat. Or you could use it for your placemats as well. And that way when you have hot dishes, things like that, it doesn't harm anything beneath. All right. So we're going to make our quilt sandwich, whether you're using just low loft cotton batting or polyester blend or the insulated batting. And then I put my applique over the top of the quilt sandwich just so I could measure my outer circle of my pie. Now you could also use your citrus slice you know, template or your original circular template to mark the outer edge. This is just going to ensure that if we're adding specialty quilting, uh, we know how far to the edge we need to add those quilting lines. So I just used a chalk marker to mark, you know, my original circle. So I used that applique piece as a template for doing so. I have not fused it in place yet. I'm going to add the quilting before I fuse my applique down. So for my quilting, I segmented my pie into eight slices. So I just drew horizontal and vertical lines, then rotated it and drew horizontal and vertical lines until I had eight symmetrical pieces of pie. So that's all the quilting I'm going to do on this piece using that 50 weight cotton thread that matches my pie filling fabric. And I thought a really cute idea, if you're gonna make, let's say, a cherry pie version of this, and you're gonna do kind of a lattice looking crust with your applique piece. So instead of creating your wavy edge, you would create a lattice, right, a uh, piece or applique that's going to go over your cherry pie filling fabric. So I thought a cute way for your cherry pie, you could uh, free motion quilt some bubbles over the top of your whole fabric, and then it's going to look like you have circular little cherries underneath your lattice applique. How cute, right? Now for, let's say the apple pie, I, my version of apple pie is a double crust pie. So it has the whole applique top is the crust fabric. But maybe you grew up eating a different kind of apple pie or an apple crumb topping or something like this. That's where you can add your quilting to make the pie that you grew up with or the pie that you want to showcase on your placemats or trivet. So have fun with the quilting. Um, you know, make it your own. The easiest thing to do, especially if you're doing a pumpkin pie, is to do the sort of pie segments, right, with your quilting lines. So after you plot your quilting lines, you simply just need to stitch over them. Very easy and you'll be done in no time. I also, after I stitched along all of my uh, pie segment lines, I also stitched along that outer line that I had transferred, just to keep everything nice and together for the applique process, etc. Oh, and that's a great idea. Amy says, I have blueberry fabric in my stash and I'm inspired to use it today. Yeah, if you find a cherry print fabric, a blueberry print fabric, maybe even an apple print fabric. That would be so cute on the inside. And actually, I purchased up a pumpkin print fabric that I thought I was going to use for this. It just had tiny little pumpkins on it. But it looked too busy to me uh, once it was all in place. But I could see if you have a blueberry print fabric that's just a bunch of blueberries or like a watercolory, almost batik version 
of a fruit fabric, that would be so great. Um, and, you know, you could even use that to do a version of the citrus slice placemats for the summertime and get, you know, a watermelon print fabric, a, you know, orange or lemon or lime print fabric. So really, really fun ideas. So now it's time for applique. And I did a little bit more experimenting with this. I thought, you know, is this really going to look like pie? What if I add a dollop of whipped cream using a piece of sulky white felty? Because felty is going to give it a different dimensional look than our quilting cotton fabric. So I just freehanded like a dollop of whipped cream and I applied it to the center, stitched around it, and then I added my crust piece. I removed the paper backing from my applique put my crust piece in place, fused it, and stitched along the applique edges. So it's a raw edge applique technique here, but you could certainly use a blanket stitch or a satin stitch if you're not a fan of the raw edge look. So the more I started working with this, here I am fusing the applique in place and stitching it in place. The more I started working with this, the more I thought that that little dollop of whipped cream made it look like a pancake instead of looking like a pie. I just kept seeing melted butter. I couldn't get past it. So I ended up actually ripping out those stitches and taking that little whipped cream dollop right off of the placemat. So you can see right now, it's a goner. <laughs> but Maybe you're more talented than me and you can create a better looking dollop of whipped cream or you could put a little dollop on each slice that might make it look more pie-like and less like a giant pancake. <laughs> you know what? Why not make a giant pancake and turn it into a pat of butter? Another idea for these placemats. Okay, so after we have our applique in place, we're gonna trim up the placemat about a quarter inch or so from that outer perimeter stitching. So now it's all trimmed up and it's ready for binding. So as I mentioned, you can create your own binding. And if you would like to create your own binding, I give you some tips and tell you how long your binding piece needs to be, all of that good stuff on the Sulky blog. So this entire project is stepped out for you step by step with a supply list and everything that you need to know. All the links to everything I'm talking about are in the blog as well as the uh, description of today's post. Um, but in the description of today's post, you'll find the link for that blog post and you can head on over when we're done talking today and get the whole tutorial. Uh, you can even print it or download it and save it to your computer for future reference. Um, if you're not ready to create it today, but you'd like to get to it before your Thanksgiving dinner party, it'll be all there for you, um, no problem. So we're going to trim just a little bit beyond the outside stitching there. And then we're just going to start applying our binding. I like to use a pretty wide binding. I cut my binding strips to about two and a quarter to two and a half inches, fold them in half with wrong sides facing, and then I stitch along the long edge leaving that folded edge nice and pretty so I can bind my raw edge, go to the wrong side with it, and then I always hand sew my binding on the back side of the piece. And I know everybody's got their own preferred way of doing binding, so definitely you do you, whatever faster, easier, more accurate, etc. for you. Follow your own follow your own heart when it comes to binding. <laughs> All right. So after that, it's finished. And, you know, I really don't mind the hand sewing of the binding, especially on a small project like this. I just do a little invisible slip stitch along the entire uh, fold on the back side of the placemat. I actually finished this up while I was watching a soccer game. Um, just brought it to the field and finished my binding. So you could definitely complete a set of four or six of these in an afternoon. Um, once you do one, 
uh, you really get into the groove. Uh, but it's also easy to do it sort of assembly line style as well. So create all of your quilt sandwiches, create all of your appliques, fuse all of you know your placemats, then go to the sewing machine, etc. So really easy to kind of streamline your sewing and get all six done together rather than finishing one and then starting another. It just becomes more chore-like instead of fun. And we're all in this to have fun, right? I just lost my light. Sorry about that. <laughs> all right. Lots of people are saying uh, <clears throat> this could be adapted a lot of different ways. So in addition to the pancake idea or the citrus slice idea, Sheila says this could be the top of a cake. So cute for somebody's birthday. You could make one placemat that says, you know, happy 10 years or, you know, put a 10 applique um, and add a little candle fabric or sprinkle fabric. So, so cute. You could make this look like a chocolate chip cookie and grab up a tan piece of fabric, make some little chocolate chips out of some brown felty and applique those on there. How cute is that? So lots of different ways you can interpret this project. I just went the pie route because it feels like pie season. Is pie season a thing? Because if it isn't, it should be. <laughs> so simple, yet so cute. Exactly, exactly. And lots of people saying, yep, use rickrack for the crust. If you have some rickrack laying around, especially those jumbo rickracks, those are so fun. Absolutely love it. All right, and here is the finished uh, piece of pie, or pie, rather. <laughs> this is really a jumbo pumpkin pie. Um, I want to say, did somebody ask how big it is? Let me measure the diameter. Um, it's about 16 inches in diameter, I want to say. So kind of like one of those big Costco pumpkin pies, if you will. I like my placemat to be bigger than my plate, of course. Um, the plate you're seeing in this image is like a dessert size plate. Uh, but my larger dinner plate fits just inside of my crust applique piece. So I think it's the perfect size for that. So to get, you know, more bang for your buck here, if you want to fuse your entire circle to the crust fabric, then cut along that inner line, that leaves you with a full crust applique that you can use for an apple pie version or a double crust version. And when I was growing up, it's still to this day, my mom is a very prolific pie maker, okay? I'm very lucky in this regard. She has won blue ribbons, uh, silver ribbons, bronze ribbons. She is silver and bronze. Blue ribbons, red ribbons, gold ribbons. I think that's what it is when you're talking about ribbons. Anyway, she is an award-winning pie maker. And she always added this type of top for the vents for her pie. So this is why I have a little leaf shape on the top of my apple pie. That's what I grew up seeing on all the pies that my mom would make. But maybe you do it a different way. Maybe you slice your, you know, make your little uh, pie vent with an X or something like that. So this is where you add your personality and your particular way of making pie to the party. So, you know, slice your applique the way that you would finish off your pie. And so cute. I didn't even quilt this one further. I just did my applique stitching inside of the lines of my cutout vent piece. And that was all the quilting I added. And then I just, you know, did my applique stitching around the top there. And around the edge of your pie, you always have a little bit of the filling seep out. So that's why it doesn't go directly all the way to the edge. Um, but now I've got a pie trivet as well as a pie placemat. So you can get kind of two in one with your applique piece if you do create that larger piece, cut it away, and have your fusible web already 
attached. So lots of different ways you can interpret this. Sandra says it's a perfect gift for your mom, right? She may just have to get a little pre-Thanksgiving gifty. <laughs> uh, my mom did bird feet. That is so cute. Love that idea. Adorable. Beverly says you could lay down a large platter and trace around in various shapes for these. Super cute. Um, I've also used little uh, cookie cutters for little cutouts either on top of the pie or along the edge. I have some little leaf cutouts. And instead of doing a fluted edge, I'll do like a forked edge. And then I add a little egg wash and I put little pie uh, dough cutouts along the edge of my pumpkin pie sometimes. And that's a really cute addition. They do tend to burn kind of quickly. So I will bake them on a sheet tray at the same time I'm baking the pie. Then towards the last maybe five or 10 minutes of cooking, I'll brush the backs with egg wash and stick them along the top of the pie and then finish cooking it so that that egg can get cooked through. Everything sticks together. It's a really cute little take on the pie fluted edge. Um, but if you're also going to do this and you want to personalize it, you can use a number or a letter cookie cutter or even just a um, applique template and cut out a little letter, maybe somebody's last name, like an M, a W, whatever, what have you, and cut that out of the center of the top of your pie crust. And then it'd be personalized maybe for each recipient if you're giving this as a gift, etc. All right. Oh, great idea. You could make a smaller size as a coaster to match little baby pumpkin pie coasters. Oh, so cute. Love that idea. See, I'm probably going to take that and run with it. You might see that on the blog coming up. What a great idea. Linda says this is so pretty and perfect for Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Um, all right. Jackie says, will we be getting the designs for the gift tags during the video on November 7th? I thought there would be directions as to where to get them with the kit I got, but I was wrong. Oh, Jackie. So the designs do come with the kit. So I believe your question actually is answered. It's hard for me to tell, but um, yes, it should come with your kit. There should be directions um, for retrieving your download uh, to get the designs for the In The Hoop Christmas Gift Tags webcast. This is what Jackie's talking about. Um, for some context, if you joined us late, we are hosting our Christmas gift tags free webcast on November 7th at 2 p.m. And she grabbed up one of the kits and is wondering where the designs are. So yes, I should have mentioned with purchase of the kit, the design files are included in both sizes as well. And that's a $34.99, something like that value, $36.99 value just in designs alone. So grabbing up this kit, great, great deal. But yes, you should get the designs with purchase of your kit. So we will get to the bottom of that for you. All right. Uh, Leslie says, a dollop of whipping cream in the middle would top it off. Yeah, you could see, I don't know, mine, I, I wasn't feeling it. But it's probably just the shape of my whipped cream. So I needed to work on that a little bit. Or maybe I needed to add some quilting to the center of it, like a little curly cue of some kind to make it look more whipped cream-esque. Oh, great idea. You could turn this into a soccer ball placement, placemat. You know, why didn't I think of that? I attend so many children's soccer games. I mean... My life is soccer. Um, it is about to be over the season, though, and I only have a couple weekends left, but um, I love it. Love watching the kids out there play soccer, but what a great idea. Some soccer ball placemats or soccer ball coasters. Very cute as well. Love that idea. All right. I think I got to all of the questions. If you do have questions... Um, oh, Sheila, another great idea. 
If you make round napkins, you can fold them so they look like a piece of the pie. You guys, what would I do without you? <laughs> Such good ideas. Okay, Linda's asking, where do you get the kit? I assume you're talking about the Christmas gift tags kit. This kit is available at sulky.com. You can find it. I also linked directly to registering for all the events I talked about, grabbing up the kits I talked about, and I linked to all the products that I mentioned during today's episode. They are right in the description of the post for today. So you might only be seeing a sentence or two under the video where I'm speaking. Just hit that little see more button or more button, depending on the platform you're watching on today. The whole description will then pop out. You'll see featured products. You'll see links for all the webcasts and links for the kits. And you can just go directly there, grab up your kit, add it to your cart. Um, if you're looking to get to that free shipping threshold, which I know we all are because nobody likes to pay to get our stuff delivered, right? We're already paying for the stuff. I would much rather get more stuff than pay somebody to deliver it to my door. Bless those people. I'm not saying they're not worth it. I just don't want to pay for it. <laughs> so if you're looking to get to that free shipping threshold, I also link to a couple of really cute little gifties and fall themed uh, needle minders and things like that in the description of today's post. Um, Little, you know, less expensive things you can add to your cart and get to that free shipping threshold. And it's kind of like getting those things for free because you would have normally spent that money on the shipping. All right. Everybody with me? Okay. Sharon says, how about using cork for the pie coaster? That's a really cute idea. Um, I would say that when you're using cork for a coaster, you want to make sure um, cork fabric you want to make sure that you're not putting a super sweaty drink on your cork fabric coaster. Um, it can recover from water pretty well, um, but if it's getting saturated, you might get a ring on the cork fabric that you can't really recover from very well. Um, it's really not recommended to wash cork fabric in the washing machine. It's not like a cork trivet that you would buy um, or even like, you know, those the thicker actual cork cork coasters that can absorb that water and then dry out. Cork fabric is a little bit different in that regard. So just err on the side of caution and use hot drinks with those if you do use that. And also, you know, that insulated uh, batting would be really good in the middle of your little coaster as well. And I would go with a much thinner binding or more narrow binding for a coaster um, as well. All right. Linda says, one of the wood blanks with holes came in my mystery box. That's right, Linda. It sure did. So in our last mystery box that we had in July, which was our Christmas in July mystery box, we kind of teased you all with a gift tag blank. It was a cross-stitch blank, and we gave you some exclusive patterns for trying that blank out. So now when you join us for the Christmas gift tags in the hoop project and I show off our wooden blanks, our wooden cross stitch blanks, that's going to be another version that you can create with the same or similar designs. So you can create our little ugly sweater. You can create the holly jolly Santa and here is what they look like. So see how there's all these little holes, right? You simply do your cross stitches in the little holes and you follow the pattern. So it's a lot easier to use something like this than it is to grab up your Ada cloth, do all of your counted cross stitch, trim it to size, create a project out of it. I mean, it's a similar, it's the same motion, right? Um, and you could also, use the cross stitch charts for these designs on Ada cloth and create something else out of it. You don't have to do the outline stitching that would turn it into a gift tag, but you certainly could. At any rate, these are so cute. I mean, creating this, gifting it to someone, then they can use it as an ornament on their tree as well. 
So once they get the gift tag, it's like two gifts in one. Um, and it becomes sort of an heirloom that you add on to your tree every year. And they say, oh, grandma made this, auntie made this, and they have it forever. So really, really cute. All right, and thank you for reminding me that they came in those mystery bo uh, boxes. So if you did grab up one of those mystery boxes for Christmas in July and you haven't made your gift tag blank yet, now you will have lots more inspiration once you join us for our Christmas gift tags in the hoop webcast. All right. Um, let's see, Lynn says, I plan to order the gift tag kit. But where do we order more glitter cork fabric? I don't see it on the site. So that's because we don't carry the fabric separately. We only have it for the special kits. Um, you can find metallic cork fabric at Sally Tomato. Uh, that's my preferred place for uh, grabbing up cork fabric because it is the highest of the high quality and it takes um, machine embroidery very well. Some other cork fabrics have a tendency to perforate with a lot of uh, needle penetrations that you need from these machine embroidery designs, or over time, they can kind of peel away from the, from the backing. And I don't get that result with the Sally Tomato cork fabric. Um, and you might find that purchasing up a second kit, uh, you know, you're gonna get more stabilizer that way, you're gonna get more thread that way as well, you'll get more of the elastic cording and another pack of needles, along with some more fabric yardage. And once you compare pricing, um, because honestly, cork fabric is pricey. There's really just no way to sugarcoat it. It's a really, really cool substrate. It looks very high-end. Um, and it is very high end. You're making really impressive looking, really neat gift tags that are going to stand the test of time. And after you've, you know, spent all of that time at your sewing machine making them, you want to make sure they're going to last, you know, beyond just one season of gifting, right? That they become something that somebody then goes and hangs on their tree or what have you. Um, so at any rate, definitely compare the cost of more fabric yardage versus the cost of another kit just to be on the safe side. Um, but this is, this is another half yard of that fabric. I have an extra on hand. Um, it's, you know, pretty wide stuff. And anyway, I love cork fabric. I use it in so many different ways. And I'm really glad that we were able to incorporate it into these designs for the event. All right, if I buy a large amount of applique stabilizer, does it go bad if I don't use it right away like the other brand does? That's a great question. You know, all of our stabilizers are acid-free and I would think they would last you a long, 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 long time. Um, that being said, I don't know what the life of perfect applique is. I, I No one's ever asked me that question. Um, so I'm not positive. Sorry, I can't answer that better for you. Um, but I would think if you keep it in the plastic bag that it comes in, um, whenever I get a bolt, it comes in a nice um, plastic bag and you can just get a little zip tie, not even a zip tie. You can just get a little, um, you know, like a bread tie and add it there and store it in that plastic bag. And I bet it would last longer because it is going to depend on the humidity that you have in your area. Probably, um, you know, I live in Colorado, so it's extremely dry. So I don't ever have to worry about humidity kind of spoiling things for me. Um, so just some things to think about there. All right, I am making gift tags that will double for tree ornaments, perfect. And I love when you can use it to house a gift card or to put something else inside, like these have the pocket on the back, really, really cute. Um, another thing I want to show you all, and this is a sulky.com debut, everyone. If I had a drum roll, I would play it, I don't, but, I'm so excited to show you all this. Now, 
I have been using one of these in a lot of my blog posts and a lot of tutorials, and people keep asking me, where do I get one of those? First of all, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a multi-purpose turning tool, and it has little grips on it so that your hands don't slide off of it while you're using a grip on either side. It has a super small ball point on one end and then a contoured point on the other. See how this side is a little pointy, this side is a little blunt, and then the end has a different shape to it. You can use this um, to poke out corners of things like pillows. Um, you can use it as a stiletto while you're sewing. Put the small ball point on things that are going under the presser foot, keeping your fingers away from the needle. It's amazing for that. I like to use it when I, let's say I have something like this, a coaster, right? After I've turned it right side out, I will run this little tool along my inside seam line to make sure everything is nice and flat. You can use it at your pressing station to hold down little things like narrow binding strips, things like that, where you don't wanna burn your fingers. And you can press along, move it, press along, move it. When you're mitering corners, you can stick this into the corner to make sure you get a nice corner point, give it a good press. It is the best turning tool. And guess what? It is now available at sulky.com. See that right there? Sulky, that's right. I have been waiting. <laughs> I have been waiting, waiting, waiting. Here's my drum roll to show you all this at sulky.com. I've been using it for a couple of months now um, because I'm special and I get, you know, premium access. <laughs> but I'm telling you all for the first time. So as loyal So What watchers, you are able to get your hands on one right now, today. They're only $9.99. They come in a nice little sleeve that you could hang on your cork board or what have you. Um, a little plastic, you know, in the packaging. And I'm telling you what, this is going to be your best friend. Maybe next to your sulky slitting pen. This might be number one. I don't know. We're going to see. Um, but especially when you're fusing small appliques and things like this, again, where you don't want to get your fingers too close to your hot iron. Perfect for this. Love it for turning really small things right side out. You can use the small ballpoint tip or you can use this contoured tip to kind of get into those corners as well. And I really just have not met another one I like better. If you're turning small fabric tools, you can use this in lieu of using a chopstick or something like that because this is so much narrower. You can really get in there and push the tube right side out, pull on it, and it's, you know, good to go. All right, so y'all are going to love this. Add it to your cart. It just might help you get to that free shipping threshold again because it's got that $9.99 uh, price point. And so if you're grabbing up one of our kits that I talked about today and you need to get to that, put one of these tools in there because you will not regret it. And I'm so excited to finally be able to tell you about it that it's finally available for purchase at sulky.com. All right. Sharon says, I can't wait to try making bags uh, or tags on cork. Also, that Turner is amazing. <laughs> All right. Oh, and Beverly, great idea. She says, I'm ordering several to give as gifts to my sewing friends. And you can make them a little tool organizer. And this is going to fit inside one of those pockets just perfectly. So another two-in-one gift. And there you have it. All right. So if anybody has any questions that I did not address today during So What Live, you can put them in the chat or you can email us at info at sulky.com and we will get right back to you. Please join me tomorrow for Machine Embroidery Basics and Beyond at 2 p.m. Eastern time and grab up your free design package from andthegrand.com just by registering. So again, this is tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time. 
If you can't join live, register anyway so you can view the video for tomorrow's event anytime that's convenient for you. All right. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Join me next Tuesday for a very special, hauntingly good Halloween edition of So What? And I'll see you then.